Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage and welcome to episode 17 of Europa Universalis 4. We are playing as England, trying to form the British nation at some point. Uh, we've managed to send some of our um, scout ships with our explorer over to find the east coast of America, but it's too far away to colonise at the moment, so we're going to have a little look around and see if we can find... Um well, it's Greenland we're looking for. Iceland's over here. I always get them mixed up. It confuses me. Because Iceland is the one that's green. And Greenland is the one that's all covered in snow and ice. It just, just causes a lot of confusion. Uh, we did take a little bit of attrition down there. Not as much as we would have done if we were heading to the coast of America. Uh, we have found the coast of Greenland, actually. Let's go up and have a look in this tile as soon as we can. And then we will return back down to Cornwall after that, of course. And uh, maybe we can actually go over there and colonise. Maybe even that is a little bit too far away. But we are going to discover some more of these provinces. Yeah, I've got a feeling that everything is going to be just a little bit too far away for us to uh, to do anything. So we've got Oxford University, class of 1481. We can either gain 10 administrative power or we can gain 10 prestige. We are quite low on prestige, although I think I'm going to take the prestige just because it's we are really low on prestige at the moment. It would be nice if we could take the ship and fill in some of the gaps. It's a fairly decent... Um, no, don't go the long way around. Go there, then there, then there, then into here. So if you hold down shift, you can actually queue up actions, which makes things much easier to do. Hopefully it won't take too, um, too much attrition going through three patches of Terra Incognita, but I do want to try and get as much of it uncovered as quickly as possible. So it's down to 84%, that's fine. Down to 77%, down to 68%. Going to take a little bit more attrition when he hits this one. And then he should come 59%, and then he should come back, and it should be fine. Um, okay, now we have a problem. My king, our people are losing confidence in your government, leading to a stability, dro stability drop. Some superstitious fools even suggested that our country is losing defined favour, and everything else drops. And that is basically because our king died. A new king, Philip um, the first of Lancaster. So, 1-1-1, one, 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 not a particularly brilliant king. Does bring us a new heir, though. Brings... Um, uh, Henry in, who's actually got six administrative power, which is quite nice, but we do take a stability drop. Uh, we do need to go in and redo all of the royal marriages, so we've accepted one from Castile. Uh, we would like to go into Portugal and offer a uh, royal marriage with Portugal, so let's go and do that. Uh, we'd also like to get a royal marriage with Leinster, because what you've got to remember is after your um, monarch dies, you uh, royal marriage offer. I thought we'd already done that. Leinster, yeah. Oh, they, they've actually asked me as well. Probably still don't have any chance whatsoever of getting one with Scotland. No, none whatsoever. D did give, give us a stability drop, which is a real pain. Um, we may have enough to boost that up, actually. If we actually have a quick look in our um, stability and expansion. Uh, boost stability would cost us 104 of our admin power, but let's go ahead and do it because that is quite an important thing to keep. Um, this guy has managed to get back and he's going to repair up. So only at 36% took a lot of damage out there. Um... But we, I think, actually, that, where is it we've discovered? That actually might be, um, that actually might be, no, Greenland's over here somewhere, isn't it? Because there's the Greenland tip. So this is Greenland here. But even Greenland, I think, is actually too far away to colonise. It's still Terra Incognita. I think we'd actually have to send our ship over there. But I think it is still too far away. Uh, we could attempt to go and try and take um, Iceland from Nor Norway. But I don't think that that's a particularly smart idea. So I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. So we'll just allow things to continue. We should be able to build a few more... Um, temples now, which are going to help with our tax base problems. Uh, we should also start thinking about getting some more ships built, but we can't do that. Uh, we're now out of uh, ducats. Uh, we've got a, another dead general. Well, that's fine. We'll save it until we need one. 
We're just trying to get our tax base up because that will give us more chance of getting uh, Leinster to become a vassal. So we got another event. We can either lose 10 Papal Influence for 10 Prestige or we can gain 10 Papal Influence and lose the Prestige. I think we're actually going to take the Prestige. It leaves me with 42 Papal Influence, which we're not currently spending on anybody. Let's go for that guy there. He's only got 22 Papal Influence spent on him anyway. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh... We'll probably wait until some of these temples are built. They do take quite some time. Let's just have a quick look at uh, Leinster, though, and see how uh, we are doing with them. Still wouldn't take vassalization yet. Um, why have we... Right, our diplomatic reputation is now down to zero. It was actually at plus two at some point. So now we're down to minus four instead of minus two, which is a little bit of a pain our military power compared to leinster is um 20 i'm not sure if it counts naval as well um we could have a bigger military but that's not going to help too much because we would be over our force limit they have a friendly attitude towards us um i think we still have our alliance we could just give them some money we could proclaim a uh, guarantee uh, I think we'll just leave things as they are until we start to get our tax up. That's that's the main thing that is causing the issue right now, is the difference in tax base. So let's start to wait until we get some of these temples built, and then we should start to see a little bit of a difference there. Of course, we need to make sure that they've got a reputation of at least 390 as well. Um, Oh, sorry, 190, which it currently isn't. So we are going to send in a diplomat to go ahead and improve the relations there. And just wait for things to continue on. Has that ship repaired? Yes, it has. Let's go back over here into Greenland Tip. Because even though we've already discovered the sea, it may actually discover for us the... Um, it may actually discover the land for us. It does happen sometimes, so we want that to happen. So you're going to go back into Cornwall after you've done that little round trip. That mainly we're going to have to start saving up diplomatic power to increase our diplomatic technology, and that will give us a better colony ranges. There are also some diplomatic advisors that give you an increased colony range as well, and they are just as useful. Um, France has declared war on somebody. Brilliant. We are going to have to deal with France at some point. They do start gobbling people up and just getting bigger and bigger. So, revolt in Cornwall. We can either ignore them and 12 regiments rise up to revolt in Cornwall. Or, Cornwall gets tax reduction for two years and gets a minus 10% tax modifier and we lose 1%. We're going to ignore them. We get some rebels. What we are going to do then is we are going to, first of all, take the game speed down a little bit. Just so I don't get completely rolled over here. We are going to hire ourselves a new military leader. So we can actually get um, a conquistador at this point. We're going to get a conquistador instead of a general. Because um, the conquistador, basically, they, they give you, they, they're the same thing, essentially. So let's go ahead and get a conquistador. And now we have a, another leader. And we can put that conquistador on to one of these armies. So a conquistador will essentially do exactly the same thing as a general will. Likewise, an explorer will do the same thing as an admiral will. Um, we're also, before we do anything else, going to go into our um, economy. And we're going to put up the army maintenance... So it will cost us a little bit more money. Now you will see that everyone's morale has just dropped. And that's because they've only just been given the higher maintenance. So we will have to wait a month or two for that to tick up. Meanwhile, let's move another regiment forward. We are going to get these guys in Cornwall. They're not going to be a problem to us at all. Um, there are a few revolts that are actually... Um, possible to, to pop up these ones that still want to pop up and defect to Brittany we're basic there's three places it's all in um, all in Brittany we're going to do harsh treatment on them all 50 military power 30 and 40 not too expensive it did spend a little bit more military power than I would have liked to have used but that is not the end of the world probably going to have to wait until January to have enough morale to do this fight and be absolutely certain that it is going to work 
So let us wait. It's going to take them a while to siege the province out. I'm not too worried about that. So I don't think we have to rush too much. There's only uh, 12 days left until the end of December. So that will be fine. There's nowhere those guys are going to be able to go. So 28th, 29th, 30th and the 1st. We'll get the auto save. Still not quite at full morale. We don't really need it. 28 troops against 12. Admittedly, they are defending, but we're not going to get a river crossing penalty or anything like that. So, prepare for some loud battle noise. So, yeah, we didn't start on full morale, but they're taking heavy losses. We're actually getting some decent rolls. And the revolt has been dealt with. So, we're going to take this guy, put him back in Wessex, and we're going to take this regiment and put them back over here, or maybe even into Oxfordshire. Uh, we, we're going to wait a little while just for their manpower to get um, back up to full, for them to be fully reinforced before we put the maintenance back down. So, what are we going to go and do with this ship? Did we actually manage to uncover any more of the coast? We did actually. We've now... Right, most of Greenland can't be colonised anyway, but there's a couple of little spots that can be. Um, range 358, so it's actually still quite far away. It didn't pop this bit up here, so let's just pop you into that tile. And then we'll tell you to go into that tile. And then we will bring you back to Cornwall. So as you can see, we definitely need to increase our colonization range before we can do an awful lot. We've lost quite a lot of our legitimacy. That comes from the fact that we obviously lost our uh, monarch. And although another one has taken the place, it does take a little bit of time for the legitimacy to... Um, to sort of come back around. We have built those temples now. Let's just have another quick look over at Leinster. Uh, vassalization. Uh, still currently at minus four. That tax base is still at minus 46. So a little bit of a pain there. Of course, we could solve this by potentially taking uh, the occasional extra province. Is it worth going to war with anybody? We really need to have a look and make sure who people have alliances with. I really don't want to go to war with Scotland because that is going to give us uh, big problems with France. Uh, also looks like there's some issue going on up here with Denmark and Naples probably fighting over the Orkney Islands which is quite interesting. Um, I mean the, the, you've got to be careful. There isn't really anyone little that I can pick on because even little people have big friends. Although, saying that, saying that, Brittany, Brittany currently do not have a um, alliance with anybody. Do we have a core or a claim on that province? We don't. And I really should have been fabricating a, fla uh, a claim against that. So let us go into covert actions. Let's fabricate a claim there. I don't know why I hadn't done that before. It was stupid of me not to. Um, but I certainly need to try and keep my eye on them. Hopefully they won't end up with um, an alliance before then. In the meantime, move these guys on to this transport ship. Move the transport ship down here to a moor. We are going to have to wait for that claim to be fabricated. It's going to take a little while. Now, if there's nobody else involved in the war other than myself and Brittany, we can just literally wipe their army out, siege their single province, and that'll be a 100% war score almost straight the way. And th those are the best types of wars you can have. But say so we really do need to wait for that... Um, claim to go through because if we don't have a claim we won't have a cb against them at least i don't think we'll have a cb against them they are still allied with savoy so there is a potential risk that somebody else could get involved in the war here um but if we were to or actually do we, we still have oh we don't have any diplomats to send do we still have a truce with them we don't Oh, they have a reconquest CB on us, but I don't think we have any CB against them. At least I don't think so.
Yeah, just on France. So we definitely need a CB, otherwise we'll lose stability if we attempt to go to war with them. So we definitely need to get that um, up and running. I'm not going to move any more troops across. I don't think we will need to. We have the ship again, of course, so let's keep our eye on this. What have you managed to discover? Uh, you still haven't managed to uncover that, which is a bit of a shame. So go into there, then make your way into that tile. And then you can come back down to Cornwall. A lot of micromanagement with the ships. With the ships, there isn't really a, an, an auto explore option, so to speak. Um, the agent actually has been discovered, which is a little bit problematic because it means we do get a bit more aggressive expansion. But it's not the end of the world. I don't want to risk moving any more of my armies over at the moment because if it is just these guys, I don't think Savoy possibly will get involved but i don't think they are going to be a big problem so let's at the very least wait until this uh claim has finished it we're at 80 percent another random event uh one reform desire which is bad for two papal influence or the papal state's opinion of us is changed by negative 20 uh well let's take the plus one percent reform desire then and eat that up we'll gain a little bit of papal influence as use useless as it is um, that ship has now returned we've done as much improving relations as we can with leinster so we're going to recall the diplomat we've also got an advisor died so you can see there's quite a lot going on especially when you are running at speed four um are you likely to get vassalization yet nope still at negative four that is fine which advisor died diplomatic advisor can't actually afford a new one at the moment because I don't quite have enough money. We do have um, enough diplomatic power to invest in another idea. And as you can see, 400 diplomatic power here will actually give us um, plus 50% colonial range. So we're going to take that. We are going to need to save some of our diplomatic power though uh, because we're going to need it for the, uh, the war. Assuming that the war does indeed take place, but I think it is going to. So we're getting very, very close to that being finished. Okay, we've got that CB. Let us go ahead and get this advisor, assuming we can afford it. No, we can't at the moment. That is a bit of a pain. Okay, so do you currently have an ally with any an alliance with anyone? No, only with Savoy. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and declare war. We could call in our allies. Only Castile would come. Leinster and Portugal would not. Um, there's probably a reason why. Um, it's a distant war and Portugal have a defensive attitude towards us so Portugal wouldn't get involved um, Castile are quite happy to do so uh, it's too distant for Leinster to get involved so this is what we are going to do and we are going to declare war uh, we're going to take the game speed down to number two and I'm going to take these guys and just march them straight in I think these guys will probably stay here and defend. I am going to get a river crossing. But 14 against 6. And they didn't even have full morale when I landed on their doorstep. Now actually. Yeah. As I was worried. Um, Burgundy and Savoy have got involved. Not too bothered about Savoy. But Burgundy is potentially a problem. So what I'm going to do is go across to Kent and I'm going to bring in some more of my units. Now mainly what we want to do is to try and defend against Burgundy as opposed to fight them. Now my trade fleet should automatically come home anyway because they are set to come home if I'm at war. You guys need to move down here. So do you... Actually, you guys can move down to Wessex. They are trying to embargo me. We did win that battle, of course. Units have suffered casualties. Uh, well, let's get that advisor, assuming we can afford him. Yep, spy offence. It's just we need the extra diplomacy. Um, their units are breaking... It would be nice to, to chase them down if we can. There's no guarantee that that is going to work, though. They are actually stopping there in Poitou, so potentially I can just chase them down and wipe them out. And there we go, we wipe them out. So let's go and siege their province, because if we can successfully siege their province, then that is going to help a great deal. 
Let's take these guys here and attach them to the transport. This transport is then going to go and drop them in Co. I'm almost tempted to leave this um, army over here on our coast, just in case Burgundy tries to land any troops on the mainland. I don't think it is going to be too much of a problem, but uh, you never know. Our trade fleet should be coming home soon. I'm not going to risk sending my explorer out at the moment. That seems a little dangerous. Just need to keep my eye on Burgundy. The big problem that Burgundy actually has, which might be our saving grace right here, is that Bergen for Burgundy to get to us, they would actually have to come through um, France's territory. And obviously France isn't going to give them open borders. I'm also going to take this um, fleet and move it down here into the uh, Kyberian Bay. Because once we manage to siege out Loire, the, uh, this ship should uh, flee. And we should hopefully be able to sink it. So at least we've now got into another war. We've got Castile coming in. I'm not too sure what Castile are going to be uh, able to do to help. But certainly, um, they've probably got a little bit of a better navy than I do. We just need to keep my, our eyes open and make sure that the uh, Burgundian army doesn't cause us too much problem. Once we've managed to take this, because this is the war goal, we will get a ticking war score and it will help things quite nicely. As you can see, we were at plus 2%. We're now only at plus 1%. And the reason for that, of course, is because the defender controls the war goal. So the ticking war score is in their favour at the moment. But I think that's probably a good place to end this video. So I am going to do that here. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you are still enjoying Europa Universalis 4. And I'll see you on the next video. So until then, goodbye for now.